guys welcome again to the women and career video blog please if you haven't subscribed kindly click the like button and subscribe to our video channel and for those of you that are not aware we do have a facebook live event it's planned for may 17th 4 p.m gmt so it's may 17 2017 at 4 p.m gmt what do you have to do nothing just make sure you find yourself at our facebook page at that time and you see the live event we'll have a panel of very interesting women share their career stories and answer all your career questions. So today's event, I have a very, very interesting guest. Actually, I've even struggled just to wheel out the entire profile. That's how good she is. So she is the CEO of Access Human Capital, is a human resource development company based in Ghana. She's also a fellow of the African Institute. She's actually part of the African Leadership Forum. She's an interesting person because she's also a teacher, not a lecturer, a teacher at the Session University here in Ghana. Also, she's the executive director for the Association of Ghana Elders. Uh, it's something she's very passionate about that led her to actually climb the Mount Kilimanjaro in 2013 because of her passion for seniors. The Network Journal of New York actually claims she is Africa, one of Africa's top achievers and she was a uh, among the 40 under 40 for Africa in 2010. I could go on and on and on, but I'm really honored and happy to introduce Dr. Essie Anta. So Dr. Essie, you know, I could go on and on and on and just um, <laughs> talk about your profile, oh, but mm -hmm. then you, you'll probably find me to, you know, <laughs> I, I was really impressed mm -hmm. about you know, the things you've done, mm -hmm. your passion. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons I told myself I need to really speak to you. I think people mm. need to hear your story. Mm. Uh, you really motivate a lot of people mm. more than what you think. You know, sometimes you, you, you come across a very humble and simple. I think there's, <laughs> there's more to this lady that's taking the road this far. Mm. So I think my first question would be tell us about you. What motivates um Well, thanks a lot for um, having this chat with me. What drives me is problems. You know, so long as there's some problem somewhere, for me, that's enough to keep me going. So I can't sit and watch things go wrong. I have to do something. I'm the kind of person who walks into a shop and sees clothes on the ground. Let's say you're walking through a department store. I'll pick it up and hang it. I don't like seeing things wow. not straight. And so, um, so long as there's some need, there's some gap, there's some problem, um, that's all the motivation I need. And um, if somebody's doing something about it, I may join the person, or I may step back. Um, but if nobody's acting, then there's the agency to act, to do something. You know, even if I start and I didn't finish, I have to do something and then get other people involved and then you know, run with it. I agree with you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, I heard that you're quite open and like really outspoken, mm -hmm. and you're like a driver for positive transformation, especially in the society. You all have to try. You, you're quite good with that. So I, I definitely would say that <laughs> I, I align when you say you're driven by the need to solve problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is why I'm here. It's <laughs> really help us solve all our problems. Oh, really? Yes, okay. because there are lots of young people out there that really want to know, you know how you did it. Uh, Let's be quite brand new. You know, I read really? your profile and I'm keep talking about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Three BSc degrees at the same time combined with partners. You said this oh, is boy. You said that you two masters, one PhD. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is the good news travel. Yeah, I think um one of the things that I like to do is just follow my interests. The good side of that is you get to explore. There's nothing like, oh, I wish I had tried that. I wish, because you did try it. The downside, though, is sometimes if you're not careful, which is what happens to me, the plate is always full. There's always one thing or the other. You know, so in following my interests, I don't like being boxed in into some narrow space where it's just one thing that I do and that's it. You know, so, um, and some people sometimes think, you know, what was it that made you go for all those degrees? It actually wasn't about the degree at all. I wanted to be a child psychologist growing up. And so I did psychology with the intention of branching into clinical child psychology. Yeah. Um, and then I figured, well, 
I'm studying in the U.S. I don't want to stay in the U.S. I want to come back to Ghana. I want to work in different countries. So yeah. it makes sense to do an international, you know, affairs a minor. But you did something also in French. Yeah. So I started the minor, and I realized, ah, I could take a few more classes and actually get a, a major in this. And um, international affairs required uh, language. You know, so you have to minor in a language. Mm -hmm. And I already have French, because I did French all the way to A-level. Yeah. So I figured, instead of having this minor and whatever, let me just, you know, do the French as a degree, do the psychology, do the international affairs. So for me, it was really, I'm interested in this, this will be useful. Okay, let's do it. As opposed to, I want to do psychology, that's it. Um, I believe very, very much in exploring. So you let your interest kind of guide the way. Yep. But you must yep. be great intellect to do this to keep you busy. How many more things? So you a lot of intellectual in our, in our system, this inherited British, you know, um, educational system, there's no flexibility. I studied in the US. Yeah. And it was such that some classes could satisfy the requirements of another. So technically, I should have graduated with about 180 credits, yeah. but I graduated with 157. But so some classes I took met requirements across the board, board, you know. So uh, it works out. I think once you decide you want to do it, this um, is how you teach it with your pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> I like to write things down. <laughs> so you know, it was second tip. So now you said you follow your interest, which is good because one of our speakers, Ellis, has also said that. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people struggle with it, but I think it's something we have to come to mm -hmm. the fact that we have to also mm -hmm. accept that no matter yeah. how we want to survive in Africa, mm -hmm. and we stick to things we know, like I just want to be a doctor because they get paid well, or like mm -hmm. because you mm -hmm. get paid, or you get respected. Mm -hmm. People should learn to also follow their yeah. interests. And I think sometimes people's hesitation from following their interests is the fear of um, not being focused and doing too many things. But I often tell the young people I counsel, when you're thinking of your career, not every interest is, you know, worth pursuing as a career. Certain things are useful because it, it gives you an outlet, it's fun, you enjoy it. So that's a hobby. Yeah. So you can have hobbies, you can have interests like social causes you pursue. So I could be a banker who has a strong interest in maternal health. I don't need to stop to go work in maternal health. But I can push that agenda. I can be an advocate, I can join other people, I can support people financially to you know work on their projects. So it's it's a matter of it's like going to a buffet. You go and you can have your main dish, which is you know, whatever um, your career name yes. vocation. <laughs> <Don't add enough. laughs> So you have your, your main focus, yeah. and you have your salad, you have your soup, you yeah. have your dessert, and those are the little things that you can still pursue, but they don't have to be forced into the career space, you know, and I think people struggle with that, and that's one of the things that I've done. Um, I teach because I love teaching, and I've been teaching since what, you know, formally since 1996. 1996? Yes. <laughs> but I was actually doing a session in 2003. Yes, so I did my national service teaching. Okay. Um, I've taught in a kindergarten, I've taught high school students, I've taught Cause college I students. Taught in the US, yeah, so community college, regular university students. I love teaching, that's my first love, really. And um, for me, teaching gives me an opportunity to. Kind of one, you, you're able to, let me try and find the right expression. You're able to, I don't, I don't want to use the word impact, but sometimes it's not always, you know, all your students will walk away positively impacted. But being able to speak into people's lives, helping them to self-discover, that's what I do, I mean, really. I think all that's my what teaching, you yeah. is to help people to self-discover. In, in all my teaching, it's self-discovery and helping people to do that. You know, and I remember growing up as early as I think class five, thereabouts, in the neighborhood, we had one neighbor who had um, four girls, and they were all younger than me. And nothing pleased me more than to sit them on a bench and um, insist that they do their homework. And because I was given the permission to use the cane, <laughs> no, I know, <laughs> the girls, the girls, the 
Yeah. 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 But um, just right from there, my interest in teaching grew. Yeah. So I teach because that's something I feel like called to do. But in this phase of my life, my um, I'm still teaching, yes, but my interest is drawn to issues concerning senior citizens, for example. Yeah. And I'm pursuing that. I haven't stopped what I'm doing, I haven't stopped the teaching, you know. So it's it's a matter of exploring because the exposure gives you what I do outside the classroom informs what I do in the classroom. Wow. What I do in so the you bring classroom. the lessons or yes. the, you know, mm-hmm. the ideas or mm-hmm. whatever you have learned yeah. from outside the classroom. But the best teachers you will find are those who um, are able to make the content come alive. You know, so the more exposure you have to different things, topics, etc., etc., the more interesting you can actually make your your content and get students to feel that ah, oh, this is relevant. Otherwise, you just sit through it and, you know, when I'm teaching and I ask students, um, how many of you like math? Of course, many hands are down. And then I ask why, oh, my math teacher in school, and, blah, 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 and I don't like numbers. And I ask, how many of you want to be rich? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I tell them, well, you want to be rich. Being wealthy means you have money. Having money means you need to manage it. Managing it means you need to understand the money. You need to understand or else you may be wealthy and your accountant will decide, if you have an ethical accountant, he may decide what to do with the money and you end up on the streets one day. So, um, and then I try to make the connection. So, if you want to be able to manage your wealth, you can't say you don't like math. Start motivating yourself because if you don't understand the numbers, you can't figure out, you know, beyond just seeing what came in and what you left, you need to understand. Uh, more than that. And if you can't, other people understand it and will dupe you. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you start making them realize, okay, and then you throw in some actual real life examples. And it gives them a lot to think about and to think, you know what? You might be right too. Yeah, yeah. yeah because so, they, definitely once so. they can relate to it and they interest, mm-hmm. I think mean, that's mm-hmm. how you can mm-hmm. contemplate it. Yeah. But you must give us another tip. I'm sure you have another tip. So um, I like keeping things simple. I think life is life is so simple. We love to make it complex, and for me, that's something. Um, I'm not a hair person. I keep my hair short. I'm a hair person. <laughs> <laughs> and we all have the different things that we really like yeah. and hold on to. I, 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 I. Life is simple, you know. So, um, what I do, where I go, my friends, my my friendships, everything is simple. I don't like complexity. You know, so in terms of how I spend my time, um, I can have a whole lot of fun just sitting in front of the TV flipping channels. And some people say, you work so hard, you rest, you have to go on vacation, go and do something great. I don't need that. If I can just catch a few extra hours of sleep, and I can sit and just idly flip through TV channels and have a laugh here, look at that, mm, okay, interesting, I'm cool, I'm all right. Um, I think sometimes we, we complicate things when it comes to friendships, when it comes to your relationship with your workers, you know, significant others. We make things complex. Um, I've learned to, you know, take it easy, let things roll off your back. Um, you know, living in a country where, in Ghana, for example, where if you're a single woman, the pressure is a lot. You it's know, an African thing. It's an African thing, thing yes. Yeah. Like, and sometimes, it's not even your family, it's the aunties hanging yeah, on the side. Everybody is. And everybody is I take people wonder, don't you get fat or don't you get upset? Yeah. Like, no, I don't want them to be upset. You learn how to deal with it. So some people come and they pressure you on when they get married. Like, oh, don't worry. Look, auntie, you wear your white shoe. You come to a wedding, we'll have fun. And then it just kind of, you know, I deal yeah. with that. Another person comes and I deliberately spiritualize it. Cool, do worry, go and do it. You know, so you learn how to actually take it easy, um, have fun with it, and let it go. So that's now, like enjoying the journey. Is that like, yeah. how you say something like enjoying the journey? Mm-hmm. Keeping it simple. Mm-hmm. Don't take yep. it too personal. Yep. And because I have friends whose reactions are they're always uptight and they get upset mm-hmm. and they'll flare up at anybody who, you know, asks them a question. Life is simple. I think. It's like a habit. When you do something over and over again, it becomes part of you. 
if you learn to always read between the lines, be suspicious of somebody says good morning, I wonder why did he say good morning? Why didn't she say hello? Why didn't she say hi? That's more casual. What you're stressing yourself out. You know, so um you learn to take it easy. If um somebody disappoints, well, they disappointed you you deal with people moving on. You don't keep you don't on hold it. on to things and you don't kind of always you know the chip on your shoulder, you're a little paranoid, who's saying what, who's doing it. It's a waste of time. I have a lot of energy. So I try to figure out how best to use it and worrying about it's things like that is not yeah, it's not it's something. It's I'll draw a metaphor to something you said earlier when we mm-hmm. were talking about the camera, you know, about mm-hmm. climbing the mountain, mm-hmm. and you were suggesting that you don't carry too much water mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. It, it comes too heavy. Yep. And I think mm-hmm. just like keeping it simple, yep. you, know, you really have to make it to line, mm-hmm. don't carry too much garbage because mm-hmm. those things will yep. bring you down. What are the basics you need? Um, and roll with the basics. You know, because sometimes we, we fret and then we try to do it all at the same time. Yes. Without realizing life is really not the destination, it's the journey. It's journey. You know, so taking it one day at a time. There are times when um, I remember a few years ago I was sharing a business idea with a friend, a young man, um, and I was telling him, Oh, I have this project, etc. etc. I said, I heard you talk to different people about this. Aren't you scared they'll steal the idea? He said, Ah, <laughs> there are so many more ideas where that came from. And there are certain things in life they need to get done. So I don't care who does them, so long as they get done. So some of the ideas I'll share, yes, yeah, somebody else should take it and run with it. I can't sit around and, you know, worry about who stole my idea and who's doing what. Yeah. Um, life is a, 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 it's a, it's a long journey, you know. So as you keep going, you're doing different things. There are new things coming in your way. And um, when I meet young people who, uh, we run summer programs for high school kids, right? And when I meet young people who have this laser focus, you are 10, and you have just that one dream you want to focus yeah. on and achieve, I get worried. You know, I think it's great that they decided on something, but if I see a young person who keeps changing their mind, I want to be a musician. No, I think I want to be an accountant. No, I think I want to be a psychologist. It gives me joy, because they're exploring, they're asking questions, they're poking around. When I find that person who is so narrow-minded and very focused, it tells me that they basically close themselves to learning, you know, because they decided this is what I want to do. So they try to to really at that age. Not necessarily, even university students. But you see, when you decide this is all I want to do, but you still open yourself up to reading other things, talking to people about other issues. Um, you are aware of what's going on around you. That's beautiful. That's fine. So if I hear you, you say we should go on to that. Yeah. Otherwise, Otherwise we're open to explore. Yes. All exploration time. is key. Yeah. Otherwise, you get yourself boxed in this corner. You have a lot of depth. You know your stuff. You know what you're about, what you want to do, but you have no breath. Let's say I'm interested in the arts. You know, so it means going to watch a play, taking a dancing class. You know, and it's okay. It's okay to combine it with the other things. But to learn and read outside of your norm, otherwise you stop growing. You know, you become stunted. Um, but if you want to actually be able to influence your core business or your core vocation, explore, then you bring those experiences back. Wow, you know. So, so we have to learn all from life. We have to explore. Lifelong. All lifelong learning. Do you have one more tip you want to share with us? Um, keep things simple. Dream with your feet on the ground. Yes, we made yeah. it. I think I've heard you refer to yourself as a grounded. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because I, I believe in dreaming. I believe in if if we don't dream, especially on this continent, if we don't dream, we're going to be bogged down by all the troubles. You know, because. You look at healthcare, sanitation, education, politics, and power. where power, oh, yes, <laughs> where things don't seem to be going well. And so it's very, very easy to look at those things and oh, we can't do it, nobody's been able to do mm-hmm. it. And then you get this one, and then you just give up. And then if you have the means, you end up, there's no power, you buy your generator. Yeah. There's no water, you get your bottle, purify your water. We do so, yes. it that only Exactly. More. So you create that space where you're there, totally closed to what's going on around you, right? 
But if you dare to dream, then you think, you know what? Others have used wind, solar energy, etc. You've got to do something about this. I'm not a solar energy expert, but let me start reading more. Let me understand more. Maybe I'll find somebody who's interested. And I tell them, hey, guy, let's come, let's, let's do something about this. So you kind of snowball your way through the solution. You know, but if you stop dreaming, then you don't even think it's possible. You know, one of the assignments in um, my leadership class is getting students to visualize leadership. You know, and so every, every day at the beginning of class, some student will come up and show us an image of what leadership means to them. It's abstract. It's on your own. It's, it's you thinking, imagining, dreaming. And for me, that's important. You have to imagine. If you don't imagine, you accept the status quo. You know, so you've got to dream so you can dream that things can be different. And then you shake yourself down and uh, realize, okay, with my feet on the ground, I have to be realistic. Here are the challenges. Um, okay, so then what next? Here's the dream, here's the reality. I need to bridge that gap between them. Yeah. Then you can start looking for solutions, etc. So you dream. Dream, dream, dream. I was going to ask you in what way you implemented it, but uh, I have some answers to it, so I'll leave that to you. But tell us one way, at least for the dream path. Um, one way you have not shied away from dreaming in your life. Hmm. And maybe the outcome, maybe it was possible, maybe hmm. it wasn't. <laughs> I don't have answers in my head, but I'll let you know the answer. <laughs> let, me, let me use, actually, let me use my company as an example. Um, in 2004, I moved to New Jersey. And um, I joined a church which had a lot of young people. And I was studying and I was also teaching at the university at Rutgers. And so I got a lot of, oh, I need to go for a job interview. Can you coach me? Can you help me with my CV? So I got a lot of that. And as a result, I started doing a lot of career coaching and helping people, etc. Fast forward to 2006 and seven, I came back home. And I had many people complaining, you know, about you can't find jobs and um, mm -hmm. no jobs in the system. And I speak to employers who say we're struggling, we can't find people. It's like, hmm, there's something wrong here. So immediately, a problem registers in my mind. And then, yeah. and then I start thinking of what I'm doing there. And I'm thinking, huh, this is possible here. Somebody should be able to match, do some matchmaking between these two parties. And so when I go into business to do what I do, which is recruitment and the training and all that, it wasn't because I wanted to provide recruitment services. It wasn't the business that drove me to it. It was, you know, there's a, it's possible to have a Ghana where people who need to find jobs will find people who need to hire. It's possible. So you reach so, out. Yes, and you start thinking about it. Ah, so we're going to do it this way, we're going to do it that way. And I remember once my, my cousin saw a, a document I was working on. I was like, What's wrong with you? You haven't even moved yet. I was still in the US. It was 2007. And I had a, I called it my master plan. And I like to write things down. So anytime I had an idea, I mm -hmm. wrote it down. And he came and I was like, you know the number of pencils you have on your desk? I was like, yes, you have a problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. So down to the stationery, you know, and what I was going to do, and then he start. I, I did this, um, it's not even, it's like a diagram of my dream office and the space. I'll have a retreat center, I'll have a conference center, we'll do training. You can already see. Yeah. You know, so dream, but um, write it down. And one idea that might be useful to those who are watching is um, an idea bank. I have an idea bank. I was so you were actually a moving idea bank. <laughs> <laughs> I have this. An Excel spreadsheet. I love Excel. Even just personal planning, I use Excel. But I have an Excel spreadsheet which has a few columns. So one is the idea, two is a little background on it, yeah. three is priority, um, four is the status, five is the partners, you know, who can I partner with, and then my last column I think is comments and updates. So what I do is when I have an idea, um, I put it down. 
And um, the last time I updated it, it's been at least two, three years. I've been terrible with it lately. So did you do it quarterly or you write it in books in my head and I put it down. The last time I did that, I had about 87. And it's just things I want to do in my lifetime. So it doesn't mean I want to do them now. Um, so dream, but it all starts with putting things down, planning. You know, I met a young man once who came up to me and said he wanted to start a school. We talked about it and I said, great, so write something down and let's talk again. He called me, can we meet and talk? Have you written anything down? No. I said, I can't talk. A year later, almost exactly a year later, he calls me and he says, oh, his school idea, oh, he hasn't started. I said, yes. And until you put the points down, and the value of that is, each time you go over it, you articulate it better. You edit, you refine, you revise. It gets better and better. But if you have an idea and it's up here, and I share it with you, I share it with somebody, I share it with many people. Each time I may change it a little bit, they all these new ones. It's like brainstorming. Yep. But you're not capturing it. So write, 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 write. You get an idea, write it down, start refining it, refining it, refining it. And over time, it gets to the point where you realize, ah, this is ready to hit the road. And then you take it around with it. <laughs> for those watching, please, if you have questions for Dr. Nessie, you can put it in our comment box. We will, mm -hmm. That's what we do. We will mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. to you. So don't mm -hmm. forget, put your comments, and we will have our website also listed, mm -hmm. so you can check out our website. It's been a pleasure for me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to say it's been a huge pleasure for oh, me. Thank you. Pleasure it's a huge me. pleasure. I, mm -hmm. I hope that you would actually, like you say, mm -hmm. Not just impact life, but you know, be mm -hmm. able to you know share mm -hmm. and influence people with yeah. your story. Yeah. So thank you again. Thank, thank you. you.